obviously this series is continuing to go on. Uh, you know, Vlad's got to get his money. So he's going to continuously pump out these videos. Because I don't know how much he paid her, Ayana, to do this uh, interview, but I'm quite sure it was more than what these shows were offering or whatever. So I'm very glad that he did it from the very first video. And everybody said, man, I, why he put this chick out here like that? Her line something, dude. I'm glad she felt the vanity to come out and do this interview publicly, putting her face out there. This opened up Pandora's, Pandora's box for her because she's thinking the Me Too movement. Like, oh, this is the time I can get my fame on. You see, <clears throat> this is why. And this is what I told these people. And since I made my video while I was talking about her inconsistencies, you seen like 14 videos pop up, right? Everybody wanted to talk about her. And they don't need, they basically just regurgitating everything people said. And I'm like, you can tell her inconsistencies because she's trying to not make herself look promiscuous. She's trying to make herself seem civilized. She did not want to admit that she gave him oral sex. Like, I just went down there and kissed it and came back up. But it wasn't like I gave a full performance. But you were okay with a person who just pulled out their privates and pushed your head down there. As a woman, you demand respect. For any young lady that's listening to this, as a woman, you demand respect. How you treat yourself is how others are going to treat you. What you allow to happen to yourself is how you're going to be treated. I don't care what a person's celebrity status may be, financial status. How you treat yourself is valuable. Very valuable. The only thing Tupac was ever guilty of was his actions towards her. It's how he treated the situation. I don't think he would have ever been in this situation, like going to jail and all of these things. I don't believe she was pushed in his direction as a setup. I don't believe that. I believe they actually went into this situation just like, this is a chick we finna run. And everything happened that fell out after the fact ended up looking so suspicious because the government was after Tupac so bad, especially after he shot two cops and embarrassed the entire police department in Atlanta, Georgia. When he got off for shooting two police officers, he never got off. They was after him, and they harassed him, and they wanted him behind bars. And Mayor Giuliani made sure Tupac was going to a federal prison where they was rapists, murderers, for a, for a crime that he had. He never should have been sent to Clinton Correctional Facilities. Mayor Giuliani and those judges made sure he went there. They wanted him to suffer. That came from higher up. But her involvement and in what I believe, just from listening to her story, you could see her struggling to try to find the right words to say that could glorify her or keep her image up as she's faking a lot of this faking emotion and she's stopped talking and everything. And he's, oh, we could take a break. She's not even crying. I had a tear coming out of her eye. Not one tear is coming out of her eye. See, this is what you don't understand. I was sent a, a letter, uh, email, this lady's talking about, like, how could you just turn... 
this is the same thing they're doing, being dismissive. And just because Tupac is a rapper doesn't mean he didn't do it. We went there, blah, blah, blah. And she put hashtag Me Too. This is not an attack on the Me Too movement. But have you seen the Me Too movement support anything black? Just saying. There have been other blacks that's been harassed and put Me Too. I mean, Terry Crews is about three, 275, solid muscle. And he said a white guy touched his private parts. And he didn't touch him because of his position in Hollywood. So he said, oh, me too. And then years later, you want to go file a police report against the guy. You know, that was the only black guy I ever heard. But at all these marches, is all these failed actresses or a couple of actresses whose career is not really going anywhere. So, you know, they want to go out and now complain about some things and just poke their nose in the situations that they don't even know anything about. But they want to speak up against it. Because anybody making an accusation, they just run behind it. There's no investigation. There's no due process. It's all accusation conviction. And if that's a Me Too movement, then I'm not a part of that. Can't eliminate due process. So when she's trying to rally behind this Me Too thing, she put her face out here so the whole general public can see her and she can be known so people can gravitate around her. And I'm not letting her get away with that without people being informed of the situation. Now, Tupac wakes up just like he said he did. He was on the couch, he woke up, and he did what he did, supposedly, and left. And her, her actions in these situations and what she's saying that happened, it's like this night would not go away for you. You see what I'm saying? This night will not go away from you because it was such a monumental moment in your life. You will remember it like a movie you watched a thousand times. You remember every little detail. You remember every little thing that did or did not happen that night. Now, here's the situation. Tupac don't have a scratch on him. None of the guys that were there had any scratches or scars on them. Meaning that you didn't fight. You had none of their DNA under your nails. You didn't scratch anybody. So when Tupac got up and left the room and you were with the other guys, why come the guy that you claimed that didn't touch you and said, I didn't want to do this to you and this and that? Now you're saying he didn't do anything, but he was charged too with the whole entire incident, with everybody else. And this is why I say you got to be careful in these situations because you could be put in a situation that you didn't even have no none on your brain says, let me do these things. And you're put in a bad environment right away. I've seen a lot of people go down for things that didn't make any sense. And what's weird for me, and that I don't understand, is these people she met on the elevator. Their suggestions would be asking, did you come from such and such room? Did you hear that on the part four interview? I, I was in so and so, she was on the elevator and the first person she told outside of that group was that she came from such and they asked, did she come from a certain room? Why would they be asking you this? Why would they be asking if you came from such and such room? Who are these people? And they took you to the security office so you can tell a story. Who are these people that grabs you on the elevator?
And why wouldn't they say, let me, oh my God, let's get her help. Let's get her to the police and get her down to security office on the floor. Why would they ask random, random people that just saw you on the elevator and asked you, were you okay? Why are they asking, did you come from such and such floor? What what does that matter? What room you came from at that point? Unless they were security. Or maybe did I miss the point when she said she was with security? Maybe if she said them, I don't remember her saying that. I'm just saying in general. It just seemed weird because like then they took her to a floor where there was security. So I don't know. But I think she's doing this on purpose and trying to omit situations to make her look good. And that's not good in this case because a man is not here to defend himself anymore, but he's already defended himself. So he's already answered to these allegations that she's already put out there, but now she just made it. And I'm very glad Vlad made these videos. Vlad, this is your best work ever for keeping her out here to expose herself. I want her to be on this platform. I want people to have visual. I want people to be able to see her lying. Because has she not put her face out, has she been like Desiree Jackson in the two, the Mike Tyson case, and she stayed away? You see Desiree Jackson ain't popping her head up, saying nothing, because she know people are going to know I lie, and now they're going to have a visual to go off of. They're going to be able to see me. They're going to be able to listen to that. And it's clear when you listen to her, she's scorned. She was scarred that Tupac was dismissive because she felt she was starstruck, as she admitted. She was starstruck with Tupac, and she thought they were, like, building a relationship, the way they were talking back and forth, and she kept coming over there to have sex with him. She was with so she was believing that she's going to be Tupac's girlfriend. And the way he treated her... And the guys ran it. That's why he said, I'm not guilty for what they claimed I did that night. But I'm only thing I'm guilty of was my actions. The way he treated her. He could have finessed that situation and it wouldn't have went that way. If he'd have thrown an arm around her and said, look, I'm, you know, if he was consoled, she wouldn't have went that way, in my opinion. No way. She was mad and hurt. And she decided to not call it consensual at a certain point. Now I don't think it's consensual because he's treating me like an animal now. I thought he cared. So yeah, it's rape now. You see? That's evil. And there's a lot of people gone up the river over situations like this. It's sad to me. It's really sad. I mean, it's a bad situation. Because we don't know what would have happened in that situation. Let's say that. Tupac don't go, you know, the, this whole thing don't happen. He doesn't get shot in New York. He don't have a problem with New York. There's no hit him up. Biggie's still alive. You know, I don't think there's an incident where there's Suge and Puff. That don't that doesn't happen. This incident caused so many chain reactions. It could have fixed everything in hip hop. That's how monumental this case was. When Tupac went to jail because of this situation. It it changed the hip hop world forever. So without her even knowing what she did, 
she single-handedly changed an entire culture in hip-hop. One chain reaction event led to another. Weeks later, the people Tupac had distrust. He was more paranoid than ever because now he couldn't trust the people he was around after he just got shot. Thug life breaks up. All this stuff happens. Circled around that entire incident. So, that's my take on it, man. I mean, for young women and y'all listening to this, treat yourselves with some more respect. And for guys, learn from this. You don't need three and four dudes in the same room, running down on a girl. That's savagery. Once you get in that type of behavior, and Tupac tried to tell you, I've cured myself of that. I don't even think I need to be in the same room while another dude is doing his business with a girl. He cured himself of this behavior. Because when he was younger and in the streets, you know, that's what they knew. They wasn't taught anything. They were they grew up in the streets. Tupac grew up in the streets. So this is the mentality. Until something like this happened, when you go up to a higher level of status and you still have the street mentality, these are the things they that comes back to haunt you. It's savagery behavior. You gotta break that. You got to break out of that mode. So, young ladies, definitely show respect for yourself. Your woman, take care of yourself. You know, hold the way you treat yourself is the way a man is going to respond to you. If you speak respectfully but hold on to principle, a man has got to honor that. And if he don't, then he's not a man. And is, and do you want somebody who don't cater to that? It's a girl on Instagram. She's the same mentality, same way. She thought she... This is her problem. She dates weak men. She dates... Lost boys, guys from the street who used to letting a woman take care of them, pampered. And for some reason, she assumed I was that way. Until she met me and was like, whoa, wait a minute. Like, he's not like this at all. And he's always educating me and, and trying to help improve me. She couldn't deal with that. Because she's used to dating men who she thought were thugs. She was a, she's attracted to that thug look with the hats and the, cause she saw me, I had on a shirt that she considered to be hip hop. I had on dark shades, baseball cap. And she's like, all oh, right, this is my kind of guy. Like he's dressing a little thuggish. And then she see me out there dressed like that. And Why I'm dressed like this? She's putting all this stuff in my head as if, okay, this is where, you know, like, this is, you know, how it's going to be. And she's used to being in control and nobody bosses me. Nobody. Now I'm like, I'm trying to help you better yourself. I'm telling you things that you do wrong so that you can improve off of it. And get better. See, that's what you want. Somebody that could be an extension to you. Not somebody that could be a detraction. So, 
definitely you you want to have something that you want that you know like this is what I want out of life. If not, I'm not gonna settle and be miserable just because you know you, you stack. <laughs> I'm gonna put up with this, and then next thing you know, you arguing and it's more problems. You you take care of it right there, so it don't become this problem later on. But it is what it is, man. She went her direction. I went mine. We still cool. But what happened? She went and got another guy who dresses like he thought, but he needs her to take care of him. And she likes having that control over men. But that's not going to happen with me. And she knew that. And all her flaws, she's still there. She don't want to improve off of them. She liked the fact that she's flawed like that and wants to stay in that zone of non no betterment for herself. But what's happening and she don't realize is that you're getting older. And then one of the time one of these days you're gonna end up marrying one of these guys. And then are you really gonna want a guy who not really doing anything for themselves and you make more money than him and you gotta pay for everything? And he just stay at the crib all day or doing whatever you want him to do? You having a guy under your thumb? It's gonna get you it's gonna weigh on you and then you're gonna be miserable so you gotta understand what you want out of life and go for it i'm out i ain't mean to make it this long but it is end up being this long but take care of yourselves and don't forget to subscribe in case you didn't already i'm out